I towed the boat back over into the yard so that uh, I can put the lower end on it and see if we can't restart it and see if the uh, engine stays cool and also worked a little bit on cleaning out the inside some more threw away a bunch of debris that was in there still got a lot more to get out this uh, just from sitting from last year it's only been oh four or five videos or a couple of videos since I had this running but in actuality it's been about a year so I did already take the cover off and check and make sure that no mice reset up house in there and it looked all clean so that's good so see this plant grew in there that's not good and we'll have to recheck the floor and see if it's still sound or if it's got some rot and then I had this mishap over here when I was trying to take this off the trailer with the loader I uh, accidentally had the loader come down and snap the steering wheel off which is a shame because I've now found out that this is a fairly rare boat what we already knew about this was that it's a Glastron boat and I thought that the model was an Aqualift but now I've learned that Aqualift is just the uh, type of hull that this has which is a, this is the uh, Aqualift 2 actually hull and the reason why I know that is because there's a classic Glastron site and they explain the difference this is a double V hull and that's the uh, Aqualift 2 and then the size of the boat kind of also narrows it down they've got all these old color brochures on their website so I can go on and narrow it down and get pretty close to what it was and then there's a serial number right here which is a seven digit serial number which they explain that after a certain year they went to the seven digit serial number and this has one two three four five six seven digits and then they tell you which digit in that serial number is the the year but actually over here where I clean this up a little bit I can see that this says model number it's a CT 140 or actually I think I found out online there is no CT so it's probably a GT that's Golf Tango 140 and that makes this I think a 72 or a 73 so I wouldn't be surprised if that's fourth digit from the right, the number two there denotes that it's a 72 because there, there's no three in this serial number. So I think what I've got is I've got a 1972 GT140, which is a rare glass drawn, but unfortunately in the condition that it's in, it it's really in sad shape. Missing the windshield, broke the steering wheel, the seats were all trashed so and the floor may be questionable now the floor was actually pretty solid when i got the boat oh and the last time i was down here in the basement working on the uh, lower end here i was trying to solve the mystery of this o-ring which i had ordered apparently and for the life of me I have not been able to figure out what it goes in uh, this is an 18-1117. I think I looked up the part number, and I think it's a good part number, but I just don't know what it goes to, so can't find it in the parts breakdown for this gear case. I did clean up this area around here because I know that this foam deal here goes down around that. So that basically just kind of gets stretched around that thing. So I think that just sits on there like that and gets compressed when you put the whole unit up in there. And then in this groove right here, you got this little O-ring, which I think its main purpose is actually just keep water from getting in here and attacking these splines. So that just kind of sits just like that. When I had taken this unit apart, this O-ring was so damaged, stretched out, or broken that it was just laying on the bottom there. But that's not where it belongs. It actually belongs up here. And then we've got, I'm going to clean out this groove here. We've got this big special rubber gasket deal right here that sits down in here. 
So I think that just sits like that. I'm assuming the beveled edge is facing up uh, to help keep it from getting pinched when you're assembling the lower unit to the to the rest of the motor. And then all we have left, well of course besides our mystery o-ring, are these three seals here. Now I had ordered four because uh, according to the parts breakdown for this unit it showed two water tubes. It showed a long water tube and a short water tube and then it showed guides for each one of those tubes. Now the interesting thing is I only found one guide that fell out each water tube I guess is supposed to have two of these seals on it. One at the top where it goes into the power head and then one down below. I'm thinking now that the diagram shows two tubes and in actuality there's only one tube. And the reason why I think it shows two tubes is I think because there's a separate part number for a long tube versus a short tube and I think it's because this motor may have been available in a, uh, well, what do you call it there, the, the long version, you know, where the, it's got the long, oh, what the heck is it, I can't think of the term, but basically, uh, you know, you get a shorter one, and then if you get a boat that's got a high transom in the back, they've got the longer one. I think that might be why. The reason why I think that is because if you look at the way this one's set up, there's a hole right here for a tube to sit in, but it's it's a blind hole, so it's it, it absolutely serves no purpose. There's no there's no place for the water to go. This one where I put the seal in, obviously that goes down into the water pump. On my other old Johnson, uh, which was about a 65, uh, on that motor you had two tubes. You had a, a tube for the water to go one direction and a tube for it to go the other direction. So it had two places for the tubes to go and, and this was not blocked. It was actually open. You could see and it did not have this whole arrangement here. So that's what's making me think that this is a completely different design uh, the way this is made. So there is, I'm actually not even sure how the water travels through this thing. But I do know like your exhaust is gonna come out of the motor and go right down here and out here. So I think this is where your, your hot water coming out of the motor is gonna be shooting back out down out through here. Um, not not positive on that, but anyways, let's uh, take a look under the motor and see what we see. Well, I'm laying on the ground under the motor and looking up to the cooling tower, and there are two tubes in there. So, how do you like them apples? Huh. So at the opposite end of each one of those tubes where it goes into the power head is probably a seal. I wonder how hard it is to change those out. Well, that is just weird. Why? Why is there why are there two tubes? One tube shorter than the other. And yet these two ports right here are at the same height. So I mean one tube oh okay. Alright. Because one tube sticks all the way down in here and goes into this seal. So the longer one's going to go down into here. And I noticed that it had a sharp burr on it, which I'm pretty sure... <laughs> I'm no expert, but I'm thinking we don't want that on there because it's probably going to make it very difficult to get that to go in there. I also tried pulling on them gently to see if they would come out from the top. And they didn't. And I'm kind of glad they didn't because I'm thinking the only way to get... I probably have to take that whole cooling tower off of the power head to change out the seals on the other end. So I think I'm going to not do that. Um, but I, I still can't understand what, what's the purpose of having that short tube go down into here when this is just a blind... I'm going to scrape around in there a little more, but I don't think there's a hole in there. Well, I went back and looked at my videos that I shot when I took this apart realized that one short extension tube or guide tube fell out when I took this apart. And I remember thinking to myself, according to the parts diagram, there's two. I figured maybe they lost one when they were reassembling it. But 
then there's also another thing on the parts diagram called an extension tube. It's supposed to be on one of these. And at least as far as the new one goes, it's made out of plastic. And that also was not in here. But I can't figure out for the life of me what purpose it might have. Because these tubes look like they should be long enough to reach right down into the water pump the way they are. Uh, the reason why I think that is because the top of the water pump case goes flush right up against this part right here. So these two right here should be able to stick down in. One is longer than the other, but as we already pointed out on top of the water pump, by design, one should be longer than the other. This one does have a sharp burger on it. I'm just wondering if at some point they made some sort of a production change that I'm not aware of because this is really weird to me. I scratched this all out and I can't see any small holes or anything or so if well bear with me for a second. All right so I just got to grommet out so I can illustrate my point here. You know I just noticed something about these grommets. They got a beveled edge. See how thin the wall is on that side and how thick it is on that side? I think I've got that lining upside down. Nah. Well, all right. So anyways, uh, what I was going to say was, uh, so if I stick this grommet down inside here, I mean, how do you like that? It doesn't even look like it fits. It doesn't. I mean, it won't even go in there. No, I don't. Well, there we go. Yep. And it goes in. All right, so I put that in there like that. And then I use my guide tubes and I get the thing seated up in there. And one of the pipes goes right down in here. And tell me where the water goes. <laughs> uh, well, I am going to take this cap off because, A, I think I've got that grommet in upside down. And B, I'm just going to examine it from the other side to see if I can solve this mystery. All right, so now I've got that out of the way. And we can see that, yeah, I put the grommet in upside down. Because if I put it in the right way, you're going to see how much thinner that wall is. See? Wow, that would have given me trouble. Okay, so I got the grommet in correctly. And I'll have to make a note on that video. Anyways, I've got that grommet in correctly, and now you can see clearly this is where the other grommet's supposed to go, not where I just had it. If things were normal, this is where the other grommet would go, right down in here like this, and it would be retained by that cap assembly. And it shows two grommets on the parts list, shows the two tubes, Shows an extension tube going down into here, which isn't necessary. Uh, I can't figure out why. But the big mystery is, look at this. Why is this closed up? Oh, I just had to take this O-ring off again so I could slide this up off. Solid metal, folks. No holes. No holes. Closed off by design. What the heck?